012 group. This is Colonel Gallagher, and I need to give you a video real quick. Um, and this is about the two battles that I mentioned previously in the email, the Battle of the Verdun and the Battle of the Somme. Uh, both took place in 1916, the Western Front. I sent you a map, and that's the reason I sent you the map, so you'd understand what's going on uh, as far as location goes. I guess the best way to start this out, if I had a big theme, would be the idea of uh, the Terminator. Yeah, uh, with the Terminator, you had the man versus machines, and nothing quite gives you that sense of like the Battle of the Somme and the Battle of Verdun, and Verdun came first, and Verdun and the Somme go together. The Verdun, the Battle of Verdun, is with the French, the French and the Germans. Okay, the Battle of the Somme is the British. Now, what you have in the Western Front is the Battle of Verdun, uh, it started in February of 1916, February 21 to be exact, 1916. Uh, and the Germans, their theory really was they wanted to get the English out of the war. So the thought was attack the French. If you can knock the French out and get them to sign and, 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 and leave uh, the war, then the British had isolated them. And then you'd most likely be able to come to terms with the, with the, Brit, with the Brits. And then this would close up the war. Now, this is the gentleman's in charge of the Germans this time is Eric von Falkenhayn. Uh, and I'll put the name to you. I'll spell it for you. F-A-L-K-E-N-H-A-Y-N. And I'll, I'll, I'll write it to you. Don't worry. I'll put it in the notation. And Falkenhayn, this is his grand plan, is to strike at Verdun. Verdun is, is a series of massive fortresses. It's a fortified town uh, that the French had constructed. And the idea is if you could smash the French at Verdun, you'd knock them out of the war. And it's really the path, technically, to Paris. So uh, what happens is on uh, February 21st, 1916, uh, the artillery opens up. And this is the beginning of the idea of the machine, the artillery. You begin to see this coordinated effort or attempted coordinated effort between the artillery barrage, the normal procedure World War I is open up with all these guns, and then the men would come up and then go out and, and, and you, would, you, would, you would go march over to where the enemy was and most likely you'd be devastated and gone. What you're going to find out is this, this never really happens. Uh, the trench warfare is really the essence of it. And people, you know, here's today the word hunker, they hunker down uh, and, and it doesn't really have the impact um, that they hope for. Uh, on February 21, the Germans opened up with 1,220 guns. These are big artillery shells. Uh, they fired eventually over 2 million shells, okay? Uh, this was eight hours long of shelling uh, and along an eight-mile front. And so once the shelling was done, as the Germans proceeded forward, um, they realized then that this didn't knock the French out. Uh, and in fact, one of the main fortresses that they meant to take that they were so happy about, the French had abandoned. Uh, the French recognized the futility of being there uh, and had pulled back. But the French were still intact. What this ends up being is a massive uh, 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 battle that goes from February of 1916. Uh, and really the peak of it is in July of 1916. But it would continue all the way through 1916 to December. And so by the time he got done with this series of offensives going back and forth from the French with a, with a, with a general who later on is going to become very famous named Nivelle, N-I-V-E-L-L-E. -E. He would later on become far more famous with the Nivelle Offensive in 1917. This is 1916. Uh, you have these attacks and counterattacks, which, which were symbolic, uh, normal for World War I. Uh, the French then defended this region very heavily. In fact, the French at the end of it had this incredible line. They would say, uh, they shall not pass. Very, very common. You know, it almost seemed like if you ever watched Monty Python, the Black Knight, you shall not pass. Uh, and so the idea of you shall not pass became a French motto to defend, okay, uh, this pathway to Paris and, and, and that they resisted and still held this line. Uh, but by the end of the Battle of Verdun, this long period of time of, of siege back and forth, uh, you end up with 750,000 casualties. This is insane. Uh, to, to liken it in your mind, picture this. Picture the city of Seattle. It's got 750, a little over 750,000 people, uh, and today it's under siege, right? Um, and so this is the idea to save France, okay? Uh, but what a cost! And so the Germans, Falkenhayn, uh, what the Germans intended to do didn't fell apart. It didn't. It didn't have its effect. And so uh, you end up with this same static design on the Western Front with this huge amount of casualties, the loss of life. Uh, and the hope that it would break the spirit. It didn't really break the spirit of the French. 
but it still did cause some uh, some sense of, of, of concern in the French mind and eventually would lead to where the French would have this this point called the mutiny on, 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 on the on the Western Front. They'll defend, but they won't advance. And so they'll end up in this static warfare. Uh, and, and anyway, what that shifts to is the Battle of the Somme. The Somme, you can look at the maps a little further to the north. Uh, and the Somme's where the British were maintained at. And the idea of the Somme was meant to alleviate, because Somme's going to take place in July, July of 1916, the, the, the big push is July 1st, 1916, but it's preceded by, if you can guess it, an artillery barrage. The machines are out there. Uh, and so what's going to happen is it's meant to alleviate pressure at Verdun. Uh, and so the, the British original design of it was really a combined British-French offensive, but it's going to end up just being the British pr primarily. And the British uh, in charge of this is a man named Alexander Haig. Uh, and Haig uh, is really about this massive sweeping offensive that you can't sit back, you have to attack the enemy, and because of this, it's going to be a terrible loss of life. So on June 24th, 1916, the uh, the British opened up with a massive artillery barrage. Here we go again. And this is a massive one-week-long artillery barrage. This is millions, almost two million shells again. Here we go. Uh, and people reported that you could hear and feel the shake from these, these shells as far away as London, is what, what you read. Now, I don't know, I wasn't there. Um, but but this is massive. This is the idea of the machine. These massive shells. Some of these shells the size of what you see a Volkswagen Beetle, you know, being launched. Uh, and 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 the idea is you're going to do this. You're going to get up out of the trenches. The British think you're going to move across no man's land, shoulder to shoulder, along this long line. And there's the Germans. They're all going to be dead. Uh, the Germans. The problem with this is the German uh, trench system had become massively fortified. It was very very well defended. The Germans just scurry down to the bunker. They realize what's going to happen. They're down there, you know, playing cards or, you know, whatever they're doing there. And uh, what they do is they just wait. When the last explosion goes on, which is, by the way, a tunnel that's dug. This is the other thing you get into World War One. You've got these tunnel diggers. And they're, they're, this is the use of the miners, okay, in, in the warfare. Uh, they bring all these miners in. Some of these regions up, you remember the Industrial Revolution. You had these people, the mining operations. And they would dig and they would plant dynamite or some explosives and then blow it up. Both all sides em employed miners. And you have these guys who go along these tunnels that have these earpieces and they would listen for the others, make sure someone else isn't digging into you. Uh, in fact, there's a really good book, but there's an excellent video you can find probably online for free now. It's called The Tunnel Raiders. It's excellent. And uh, anyway, uh, the psalm, uh, as this goes on, now as this barrage ends, the, 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 the British get up. They're told over the top. There's all these great uh, speeches given beforehand, you know, to inspire the troops. They get up. They, they all march off. Uh, and, and this is July 1, 1916, still the worst single military day in British history. 57,000, almost 60,000 casualties. Because the Germans just come out of their, their, their fortified trenches, put machine guns, they start protecting them. There's barbed wire. Uh, which is not good for trying to advance so quickly. I don't implore you to go try it. Uh, I wouldn't do it. Anyway, the psalm ends up being this five-month-long siege on the Western Front. Uh, in total, uh, about from the statistics, three million total soldiers on both sides were involved in the Battle of the Psalm in this five-month period. Out of that, one-third, yes, one million casualties uh, or missing in action. This, this also happened, KIA killed in action, MIA missing in action. Uh, and so this is also where Falkenhayn resigns. And Falkenhayn now uh, removes himself from being the leader of the Germans. And why this matters is these two new gentlemen come in, a guy named Paul von Hindenburg and another man named Eric von Ludendorff. OK, and once again, I'll put the names up there. If not, I will email them to you gladly. Uh, and this represents a shift in the philosophy of the German campaign. Uh, Hindenburg and Ludendorff are going to begin to uh, escalate this. And it's going to begin to involve, if you notice, from moving to the end of 1916 and 1917, the Americans being involved. The Americans have been, uh, to some degree, interested. <laughs> They've been reluctantly involved in some ways. I'm just going to be very careful with this. Uh, by 1916, Woodrow Wilson, the President of the United States, uh, has been dealing with trying to negotiate and do diplomatic uh, elements here. Uh, of course, we, we've kind of bypassed, but we'll come back to it when we get to the Americans. Uh, uh, the Lusitania, uh, the sinking of it in May 1915, a half of the year before this 1916 period we're talking about, and the Lusitania where the Americans uh, smuggled weapons aboard this wonderful 
tourist ship. You know, you always wondered when I was in class, I told you I didn't understand why the Duke got shot and everybody went to war. I was like, this makes no sense. But then when I was a uh, high schooler, you know, the Lusitania sunk, and I kept thinking, what are they trying to ruin the British tourism? You know, this is the old objective of it. Um, but no, it's about the, 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 the sinking of the ship, uh, carrying the, the supplies from the United States uh, by the United States over to the British. And so the Americans have been interested in this. And in their mindset now, you get this, this layering uh, to the Americans that their hopes and their interests of the war lie with the allies, with the British and the French more than with the Germans. And you see this through investments. Uh, you can track the money, so to speak. Follow the money, you'll, follow, you'll find the solution. And, uh, and it's also, in a, in a sense, a political ideology and commentary. Who would you rather have in charge of the trade and control of the oceans? Not the Germans, the Brits. And so this becomes a relationship that begins to tighten more and more. Um, but the horrors of the war is seen in the Verdun and the Somme, the Battle of the Machine. Well, the Somme was also the introduce, an introduction of the tank uh, into this uh, combat situation. Um, and as I aforementioned, the barbed wire and the, and the artillery. Okay, I'm going to, it's 11 minutes. I'm trying to keep it as short as I can. I apologize. I hope this helps you. I hope it gives you the sense of the horrors of the war on the front, the Western front. The idea of the change of leadership, the Germans now are going to begin to shift their philosophy with Hindenburg and Ludendorff of what they're going to do to, to try to win this war and, and finalize it, uh, both on the Eastern and the Western fronts. We'll come back to both of those eventually. But at this time, please, if you can, watch uh, uh, the first two segments I gave you on World War I, especially the other one on FGI, FGHI the alphabet version of World War One, And then finally, if you get a chance, you can notice this, the, the schedule I sent you uh, prior to Thursday of this coming week, if you can you know, get a chance to glance at this and, and review it a bit. Uh, thank you very much. You have a, a wonderful time. Be safe, and I'll see you eventually. Thank you. Bye.